G'day, welcome back to the Permaculture Retreat Center in Miske, Bolivia. If this is your first time watching, my name is Simon and I come from New Zealand, but I've been here for maybe 12 years in Bolivia. Uh, this is a continuation on a series of videos helping people to decide and go back to the land. The first uh, video we made was uh, factors to consider when buying land and uh, this one is when to actually buy land itself so let's get into it yeah so we're going to look at uh, factors like financial like skills and even spiritual i think a lot of people would resonate with me when when i say like there's this little voice inside your head saying things are not quite right and maybe we should do something about it and take some personal responsibility and not be such a consumer so dependent upon global systems and or be a 100% consumer you know start taking responsibility for our environment and what we what we eat and I think the first fear that comes up the first thing that stops a lot of people that are working in the city professionally is is they're afraid they're afraid that they're going to have to learn a whole new way of life and uh, be in a place where there doesn't seem to be much economy and like how will they when when the people that are in the countryside are seemingly struggling for wealth you know conventional measures of wealth they don't seem to be excelling at that like how they would go ha not having those same skills and my response to that is because I came from that myself you know I've worked in London as an analyst I was selling computer um, technology solutions in, in New Zealand so it triggers a fair response to think how am I going to survive in the countryside because it's not necessarily a, a relatable skill a direct transfer of skills but you've got to assure yourself like anyone like if people are living there you can live there and you bring just like nature and a, a different diversity different skills different abili abilities that will will serve the community and you'll find a way to not only survive but to thrive over time the other thing is i heard once that it takes like five years of two hours a day to become an expert at anything so if you focus on one thing just two hours a day for five years after five years you're a recognized expert so uh, that speaks to timing you know the sooner you start you start to get over that learning curve you get you start to get some competence over over after enough time it's going to be a lot easier and in fact it will start to bring more of what you need into your life i'll give you an example from our from our life you know we've received hundreds of people from overseas like as volunteers and I used to take it upon myself and I still do to share the knowledge to help people to take more responsibility to create freedom and abundance in their life and in their communities and now after several years of doing that we actually offer a course to and and people pay come here and, and pay us to teach it we have more systems now I have more competence at delivering it uh, we've done more trials and it's just that thing it's been probably five years of receiving people and now I'm an expert in some fields and, it, and, it, and it's, it's nourishing us. So um, get into it sooner than later on that one. So here's another factor. Thank you, birds. Laurels. <laughs> Beautiful parrots. Some of them have got blue wings. This alfalfa here is one of our primary, one of the primary things we produce. The neighbor's horse, our mobile poo factory and lawn cutter is um, enjoying it. So do the ducks part of their feed it's the principal feed for the turkeys the chickens too we have rabbits that's that's all the rabbits need really this and a bit of water but to plant this alfalfa it actually takes preparing the ground months before winter and you can only really plant it in the winter here which is um, June and July and it'll give you a, a yield every five weeks and lives for like eight years but here's the thing if you miss your timing you might have to wait close to an, a year to plant it so you know if you're waiting for uh, food not to be on the, on the shelves or uh, you know the big collapse or or let's say inflation to get too bad before you move to the countryside factor that in it's not an overnight thing you know the sooner you get on your own land and put a tree in the ground or get some crops that are that work for you while you sleep you know every day they're growing the better prepared you'll be in the, in the, and more comfortable, more resilient over time. I think we can all agree that the more independent we are, the less dependent upon centralized systems and monetary instruments, the more peace of mind we'll have, you know? So it's great to know where your water and food comes from or actually produce it yourself and shelter. 
not being beholden to a landlord or a, a government that wants to charge you property tax or a mortgage, you know, keeping you on the on the rat wheel. Maybe get rid of that extra house or sell the city dwelling that you have or the boat or you know, not take that holiday or not watch the bits and bytes on the computer, you know, they're going up and down and put it into something real, something stable, something that uh, has been proven to deliver the best return uh, economically too over the long period of time, land, and uh, start building some independent systems. And uh, I just want to highlight an advantage of getting on the land sooner is that, you know, this provides us with clean water that we don't have to go and buy filtered water. And, and, and in fact, we can even make all of the disposable parts of this, the activated carbon, we can make it ourselves, the charcoal. But it took us six weeks with a lot of hands to make. We had to get the barrels from a nearby city, get the materials from the river, you know, wash it all and that kind of stuff. And you've got life at the same time, right? So to suddenly lose your water and not have thought about this ahead of time, it would be pretty difficult, you know? So the sooner you're on land, land the more independent systems you can you can build and more at peace you can be. At a minimum, you're gonna need an amount of arable land so that you can grow some of your own food and produce a surplus of something and space to live on too. So here's an example, it's a nice sized land, like an acre is enough for a family of four and a basic living structure. This one's made with mud, so uh, you know, if you get there early enough, you can, um, you can build it. It just takes you, takes you some time, but timing is everything. I'm gonna get into, uh, take a deeper dive into the economics uh, facing land purchase and uh, in the rural land purchase. So I believe the, the, there was a place in, in Texas, San Antonio, Texas, they let in tens of thousands of, of Mexicans in one hit. And uh, I think it might have been, forgive me if the statistics are not exactly right, but the, but the point is it had a net, had an impact, a measurable impact on net migration. So let's say that it took net migration up 3%. And what they noticed was that for every 1% of net migration increase, the properties in that, in that area went up 10%. So if you're in an area that, uh, conversely, an area that has negative net migration, more people are leaving than coming in, the real estate value is going to go down by a factor, a tenfold factor for every percent. So how does that uh, relate to the times and timing for when to move back to the land? So if you're procrastinating and living in the city and thinking it's not so bad right now, just go back to the Great Depression when the majority of the population were living in rural areas and had farming skills and the setup and that kind of stuff. And uh, the minority were in the cities. A lot of cities had up to a 90% disoccupancy rate in the so-called Great Depression of the 30s because there was a lack of food and a lack of work. Now, let's go forward to today, where the majority live in cities, super dense, densely populated cities, we're already seeing inflation, stagflation in fact, which is a precursor to hyperinflation. And, um, and there's a, banks are starting to fail. That means companies are not receiving their money. They're not paying employees. They're laying off employees. That's, that's uh, reducing the, uh, the economy size by a factor of the multiplier effect of money again. So it can snowball very quickly. Now, what does that mean? So more and more people are gonna get the idea that they need to leave the city. And it won't take many of the people, a, a big population reduction of the city to going to small areas. You know, a place like this with, let's say, 20,000 people in the whole region of Miske, 200 people is gonna increase the property values here 10%. 200 people moving from a city is nothing. So if you wait too long and it's just common sense to move out of the city and it becomes a common idea, like uh, what the properties could be four, five, ten times the price that they presently are. It's still possible today to buy productive land. The other thing is who's going to want to sell productive land when in inflationary times? You know, back in the depression again, people didn't want to accept paper money, fiat currency. They'd rather do a trade. I think it was like two eggs for a movie ticket, you know. Um, they want to accept real things. So if you're on productive land that you can trade, that can hold its value in inflationary times, or in fact build wealth, then um, you're not going to want to sell. 
And if you're competing with a lot of other people with that net migration impact, good luck. Double diamond. Oh. Yeah, and lastly, I think uh, the creator of all things has gifted us with life and uh, the ability to experience creation. And uh, maybe we should listen and, and abide by the laws of nature and, and our lifestyle should reflect that. And potentially, you know, all of these dictates that are coming down the pipe about uh, experimental injections and gene therapy and GMO food and living in, in little cubicles and under LED mercury lights and all this stuff. You know, maybe that's not aligned to nature. That's not how our bodies, our temples are meant to be, are meant to live. So, you know, getting onto land sooner, it's going to, it's going to reap a mental physical and spiritual benefits and you know potentially we're only here for a short time but uh, you know and we never know when our time is up our body's time is up so we should live as we mean to carry on amen come on down baby oh yeah El Taco Garden Bar in Miske lovely well thanks for bearing with us on this uh, on this journey of discovery and giving us your uh, your time watching. Look, uh, in summary, you know, I haven't personally moved back to the land out of fear at all. It's just, we love this lifestyle. We eat like kings, you know, it's, things are super tasty from the garden. We sleep well at night. Oh, look at this. Hola, bravo, bravo. Gracias. <laughs> Soon we're gonna celebrate another video done where it's rather tiring, you know, not natural for me. But look, this is a choice out of love. And uh, in terms of timing, of um, you know, when's the best time to get back on the land? Quite frankly, we should never have left the land. It should be intergenerational. Uh, we should have inherited land intergenerationally. So um, the sooner you get back to it, the better it's going to be for you and your children and your and your grandchildren. I'll make a video on that later. So thanks for watching again, and you're able to get off that hamster wheel, knowing that every day. You're, uh, you're close to being independent, you're building community, you're saving your fertility, building soil fertility, and uh, if you follow along on our channel, we'd love to share more of the journey with you too. So here's to you. So thank you for watching our videos and supporting us. Leave a comment uh, if you have any tips to share on when is the best time to buy land. We think it was yesterday. See you guys next time. Toma iguna. Tengo una regalito para ti. ¿Cómo se llama eso? Plantar en la tierra. Y sale nomás. Va a tratar. Ya, voy a plantar. Gracias. This carpenter gives us sawdust for the compost toilet and we have a really nice relationship. It's give and take, right? So now that we've got this plant for sushi producing for us, it's uh, we can spread a bit of abundance and the community is like Rica and Sofa. So some people say that uh, Actually, you really look at Bolivia and say it's uh, like 20 or 30 years behind the rest of the world. But, you know, when you start to see fuel shortages and electricity and gas prices going through the roof, I guess at some point when that stuff, that cheap energy is not available, we're going to turn around and there's Bolivia 20, 30 years ahead. Like, how long does the know-how to, like, erase these bulls, the foresight also, how to work them, how to train them, like, um, yeah, it's cool.